Hello and welcome to the channel. This is an unboxing of the Toro Storm Tracker 2890. Um, it's a track snowblower, it's 28 inches. I'll get into more of the details later on. Um, it's one of the best value uh, track snowblowers on the market. It retails for $17.99 and uh, you may not be able to get a hold of it through your local Home Depot but uh, you can easily order it online through TroyBelt.com. I'll put a link to TroyBelt uh, in the description in this video and in the rest of the videos. I'm going to make a couple three videos on this. Today we're just going to unbox it and get it set up and then I'll make a video where I go through all the features and why this may be a good snowblower for you. Uh, we'll probably make a, another video looking inside to see how the transmission works and stuff like that. And then later on when it snows we'll get out and show you how well it does. So let's get started. Down in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Bear real bad. This one probably you'll get to put this one together yourself. Uh, there's not a lot to doing it. The probably the biggest task is getting it out of the box. Troybilt puts their snowblowers on a pallet inside of a box. So what they suggest that you do is there is a dotted line along the bottom of the box. If you just take and cut that through all the way around, the box lifts right off. I'm going to do it a little bit differently since I opened the top already. I'm going to pull this frame out and then I'll cut the sides off. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to waste your time while I do it. This is, it's not nailed down. It just all sets right inside the box nice and neat. So it won't take you long to take it apart. All right, I'll come back when I'm done with that. When you're taking the box off, look along the sides and down on the bottom to see if you see any oil spots. The uh, snowblower comes with oil in it already and every once in a while you'll find someone tipped one of these boxes over on its side or upside down and the oil has uh, drained out of it. So if you see any oil spots make for sure you check the oil level before you go to start this snowblower doesn't hurt anything but just if it doesn't have the oil in it you're going to blow your engine. When you get the box off the manual is attached to the gas cap inside the in the inside the bag is assembly instructions uh, the a spare safety key and some extra shear pins uh, all your operator's instructions, your operator's manual is in there. Uh, take the time and go ahead and read that. Also, you'll see that there's some rubber bands here. Leave those rubber bands on until you lift up the handles. And we'll do that in just a second. Also, before you lift up your handles, uh, remove this chute crank. It's just tied on with a tie wrap. You can leave the chute lay right where it's at for the moment. So we'll uh, let's do this. And there is a little protective film here on the chute crank to keep it from scratch of the engine. Tribal does a really good job of packaging their stuff. They've been doing it the same way for a long time and uh, it just works. You hardly ever have a problem with packing. In fact, uh, 
probably doing just about all MTD snow throwers. The few times that I've had any problems with them is uh, I had a dash cracked one time because somebody hit the crate with a with a forklift. Never had a, any problems with missing parts. And let's cut this. Trevo doesn't use the thumb nuts or the, the wing nuts. Uh, they want you to put this handle on and put it on permanently. Okay, when you get ready to raise the handles up, which is the next step, you'll have to remove two bolts, pull it up, and put the bolts back in. Trevo uses locking nuts on these bolts and uh, over the years, I've seen them use a bunch of different things. Uh, they made a quick one for a while, uh, knobs, you know, hand knobs or wing nuts. But uh, I found that over time, I lost a few of those. So I'm kind of glad the last few years now, they've just gone to uh, locking nuts. So once you lift this up, put the bolt in, and tighten everything down, it'll never fall apart on you. So. You can take these out. One side is a, the bolt is captive. It's a square carriage bolt type deal. So you'll need to use a wrench to take these off. And you can use an open wrench, an adjustable wrench. You can use a socket. I've got these gear wrenches. It is a half or a, thir a 13 millimeter will also work on these. So just take them off. Have my wrench flip the wrong way. I suggest you take the nuts and lay them off to the side. And the wrench. Then take the bolts out, grab a hold of the handles, and lift it up. As it comes up, this rubber band will keep all the cables in alignment. So everything fits in place just really nice. Go ahead and put this one in over here. Put your nuts on. That uh, captive square part may not fit into this bracket all the way at this point, but when you tighten your screws down, it will. Tighten your nuts down, duh. So your nuts are on, go ahead and grab your wrench and tighten them. And I usually kind of go like this a little bit. I won't tighten the bottom one down completely. I'll come up here and Tighten this top one down.
just before I sense the bottom one up, I'll wiggle it just a little bit, make sure it's setting in the groove here. All right, your bolts are inside, so you can't get them caught on your pants or anything like that. And we'll tighten this one down a little bit. Just before we tighten it, we'll wiggle it, make sure it's in the groove. sure your cables are where they belong and these will fit in when we put the chute on there is a couple tie wraps on here leave them on uh, can you see this tie wrap here this cable should be in this pulley this cable there should be Another pulley down below, down there where a cable is connected, and then this cable is connected here. And take this piece of cardboard off. Trying to do this with one hand. There we go. And then you can pop your rubber band. good it does come with two safety keys let me move around <clears throat> one safety key is tie wrapped to the starter handle and the other safety key is in the bag I usually leave the one that's tie wrapped to the starter handle there now uh, that way if I lose one I know exactly where it's at and the one that's in the bag I'll put in the machine so by the way all of the parts that you need to get this snowblower up and running are on the snowblower itself the pin and the clips that you need to hook up the chute the safety key all that stuff is attached to the snowblower so if for some reason you don't get the bag that has the extra safety key, the operator's manual, and the extra shear pins in it, that's not a big deal. You can still get this machine home and use it. All right, I managed to put this on without turning the record on. So when you get ready to put your chute on, there's a nut that's on the bottom here that's on this bracket. Take and loosen that plastic nut, take that off, take this pin out that's in this frame, set it all down, put your nut back on here but don't tighten it yet, put your pin in, put your safety clip on, and then come back and tighten this nut. This bolt with the plastic nut on just holds everything solid so you don't get those little mechanical rattles that you get with some of the other snow blowers. So at this point in time, now go ahead and pull this pin up top, put your rod in and put your pin in. And your rod lines up Back here, it's a hole with a nylon insert in it. Keep everything nice and smooth so it doesn't rattle. Go ahead and stick that through. And I still got a little plastic on this rod. See where your hole is at, 
So when you go to put it together, you can find that find that hole. And it is keyed. So you keep if it won't go in, just keep turning it, turn the crank, and eventually it'll pop in there for you. There we go. And that's all ready to go. Okay, at this point in time, officially it's put together. There's still a few more things you want to do before you go and start it. So, I'll get around to taking the plastic bag off here finally. While you're here, check your oil. And the oil's going to be new, so it'll be nice and clear on the dipstick. And it should come, come between the there's two little holes. It should be come where somewhere between those two holes, and this one comes right up to the top hole. So it's full, ready to go. Get your safety key out, put your safety key in. Remember, I just use leave the one on the handle there. So safety key goes. Do 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 do. Safety key goes right here. There's four steps to st starting this snowblower, just in case you want to do it right now, because you can. Number one, make sure your safety key is in. Number two, it comes with the throttle in the stop or off position, so go ahead and move that over after you put fuel in it, and make sure you don't put E15. This takes E10 or non-ethanol fuels. 87 octane is just fine. So after you get your fuel in, put your finger over this hole on the primer button and press that about four times. Take and turn your choke to close, and then pull your handle a couple times. And it if it doesn't start right away, go ahead and stop it and put your finger over the primer bulb and push that a couple more times. Pull it again, it should start. If you, if you make sure you have those four steps done and uh, they should fire right up for you. So throttle off of off of stop, key in, primer button, press three or four times the first time, and then put it on choke. This does have an electric starter. You can plug your garden uh, extension cord into here, press a button, and it'll start with the electric too if you're having issues, but 99% of the times these fire off right away. Uh, a couple more things while we're here. Everything should work smoothly on this machine. Take and move, push your hand, hand lever down. It should be a nice tension, even tension all the way. This is your steering trigger here. You'll hear a little click. Same way over here, a little click. Push this one down. It should be nice, even tension all the way. This does have a one-man control on it, one-hand control on it. So both levers will lock if you held, hold this one down. That's opposite of the Toro and the Aarons, but it all works the same on the Cub Cadet and the Troy Belt and the Yard Machines. I forget about the Husqvarna. So this deflector here, or this lever here, handles the chute deflector. So when you move that handle, that controls how far the snow throws. The crank down here that we just installed is a quick crank, and it moves the chute around. The 
<clears throat> speed control, you can mess with it if you want to. It'll be tensiony. So the way it sets right now, without the engine running, it'll want to go forward on you, kind of spring-loaded. And there's notches in here, so just pull it over and pull it back. I would leave it in F1 forward. So the first time that you go to move it and you push down on the drive lever, it goes forward and doesn't want to back into you. You can go around and check the rest of the machine. And Troy Belt is always really good at putting them together, making sure they're assembled correctly. Um, all the nuts and bolts are all, almost always tight. Um, you can check this wiring control here if you want. That's for the headlight. Other than that, you can pull your plastic off the front if you want. There is, this is not uh, tied to the bottom pallet. It's just sitting there loose because the pallet sits inside the shipping crate. So once you get ready to move it, it'll move right away for you. So that's it. Any questions? The next video I'll take and go through this machine and show you all the features and uh, the pluses and minuses of it and whether this might be a, the right machine for you. At uh, only $17.99 US dollars, uh, this is a pretty good bargain right now. So, all right. If you like this video, please like it. If you like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Down in the dirt.